Hello, it's Scott Manley here with an update to Launchapalooza. It's now Scrubapalooza, with four of potentially five launches being scrubbed, all for different technical reasons, which is kind of interesting in and of itself. But yes, many of these may be rescheduled and we may still see um, four or even five launches tomorrow. So keep an eye out. The only one that hasn't been scrubbed is the Indian Space Agency's launch, but of course there's still time yet. Anyway, of course, um, this is what happens when you have great expectations when they meet, you know, reality. You can't really predict the future always. So let's talk about the past. This is December 18th, 19, sorry, 2018. And uh, that does actually make it the 60th anniversary of the launch of the first communication satellite. Now, of course, this depends how you define communication satellite. But yeah, December 18th. Um, 1958, officially the US Army was going to test uh, an Atlas missile. Uh, what was a secret was in fact that it was carrying a payload that wasn't just a mass simulator for a warhead, it was carrying a, an experiment called SCORE, Signal Communications by Orbital Relay Experiment. And um, yeah, this was going to carry on board a tape recorder, well a pair of tape recorders and some communications hardware. And when it got to orbit, it was going to be able, you would be able to command it to record stuff to the tape and then command it to start playing that tape back via short range radio. And yeah, that's exactly what it did. Now, this is an early version of the Atlas. This was the Atlas B. The first one that became operational was the Atlas D. So there was still iteration to happen on those uh, tanks and everything. Instead of separating the satellite, you know, and uncovering a payload and everything, the sp entire rocket was the satellite. They built in the extra hardware into the nose cone, they put antennas around the outside, and yeah, they successfully launched it into an orbit with a perigee, a perigee of under 200 kilometers and an apogee a bit further out. It was quite an eccentric orbit because they really just burned the engine to depletion and they wanted it to stay in orbit. Uh, as I said, it was a secret. Apparently, like, only 35 people knew that this launch was going to be carrying this experiment, although more people had worked on it. They'd actually told a bunch of the people that had worked on it that actually the project's been cancelled, sorry, um, only to reveal it after it finally made it to orbit, which was pretty cool. The message that it ended up broadcasting most was a message from President Eisenhower. Uh, originally, he hadn't recorded the message for it, but at the last minute, it, he decided that he was going to do this message. It was a Christmas message of peace to the world. Uh, and now to get it onto the spacecraft, well, of course, they'd, you know, they'd closed up the spacecraft by the time this message was recorded. So they just went to the Cape and they activated the communications hardware while it was still on the pad and, you know, <laughs> uploaded the message. Uploaded really wasn't an upload, it was more a playback and a recording. Yes, me thinking about these downloads and sideloads and uploads. No, this was, this was a replay, a playback, a recording. And yeah, I mean, it was a message from Eisenhower, but it wasn't entirely a message of peace and love and uh, you know, human unity. It was also a message that the US was really able to finally put significant masses of hardware into space. Um, I mean, the upper stage, the entire stage of the Atlas was a significant chunk of hardware and it was a sign that the US was finally able to lob nuclear warheads anywhere on the planet. In theory, very much in the same way that Sputnik was exploited by Khrushchev to say the same thing. Uh, so the spacecraft operated, playing back its message for about two weeks. The orbit was low and because the Atlas was quite a, a low density spacecraft after it expelled all its fuel, the spacecraft only stayed in orbit for uh, about 35 days, I believe, before falling back. But yeah, it does technically qualify as the first communication satellite, although it operated via store and forward rather than simply repeating the data. Um, so yes, there is that and still hoping to see a bunch of launches in the next 24 hours. Keep, a, keep looking. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.